Main article. Battle of Felucia. Great Jedi Purge. I've seen her kind before. A young Jedi who turned to the dark side, corrupted and evil, murderous. Bail Organa. On Maris Brood during the trip to Felucia, Starkiller researched Bail Organa, and found himself struck by how familiar he seemed, though he wasn't sure where they had crossed paths before. Upon arrival, Starkiller drew on his experience as Vader's assassin and found Bail Organa's landing site by searching for his ship's senatorial transponder code. As they descended, Juno detected signs of a large Imperial presence groundside. When they landed alongside Organa's shuttle, Juno had Starkiller accompany her to the other ship, ostensibly to check that it didn't contain the senator's corpse. Once alone, she made a quick inquiry about how he would find Organa, before speaking of their need to avoid raising Ramkota's suspicions as to who they really were. Starkiller attempted to reassure her by saying that if Kota found out about their past allegiance to the Empire, then the old Jedi would not live long enough to tell anyone. Juno's worry was only increased, so Starkiller turned to the matter at hand. His primary concern was convincing Organa of his sincerity, as the senator would be much harder to convince than the blind and alcoholic Kota, or the teenaged Leia. As Starkiller trekked through the Felucian jungle, he found that the world's balance had shifted towards the dark side in the wake of Shark T's death, though Starkiller was surprised by how uncomfortable it made him feel. As he made his way deeper into the jungle, Starkiller was attacked by a plethora of predators, and the now unrestrained Felucians fought him every step of the way. Even the plant life attempted to kill him. On one occasion, Starkiller managed to dodge a tree that had split itself from its roots and attempted to crush him before growing an entirely new root system, evidently to feed on whatever creature it had trapped under its bulk. Faced with this chaotic scene, Starkiller reflected on the nature of the dark side, and how harmony in nature was practically non-existent. The resulting conflict was where the power of the dark side came from. As he traveled towards the ancient abyss where he had last encountered Shark T, he happened upon a squad of scout troopers who had evidently seen the rogue shadow flying overhead. While he dealt with the troopers quickly, he drew the attention of many others in the area. He was promptly attacked by a trio of Felucian warriors hiding in a pit of quicksand, though he made quick work of them. Hurrying to the ancient abyss, Starkiller found the Felucian village run down and abandoned, while the Mega Sarlacc itself was restrained by an Imperial Sarlacc stabilizer. Freeing several of the beast's tentacles to relieve some of its pain, Starkiller descended through the stabilizer elevator into the Sarlacc's digestive system, where the Felucians had taken refuge against the Empire. Starkiller searched around before being spewed out the creature's lung when it exhaled. Following a deepening in the dark side, Starkiller traveled northwards from the ancient abyss towards the Ranker graveyard. En route, he was relentlessly attacked by Felucian natives, some riding rankers, with an intervening force of Imperials only adding to the chaos. As he fought them, he reflected that he was quickly becoming accustomed to ranker death cries, a sound that had previously disturbed him, sometimes cropping up in nightmares. After one particularly furious encounter, the Felucian ambushes ceased, and Starkiller was able to enter the graveyard unhindered. As he searched the graveyard, he suddenly realized that his familiarity with Bail Organa came from one of his Force visions. He began sensing the Senator's presence, but also the presence of the Dark Side concentration that he had been tracking. After finally finding the Senator, Starkiller freed him and explained that he had come to Felucia with Ram Kota as an ally. Organa informed him that Shark T's former apprentice, Maris Brood, had since gone mad and fallen to the Dark Side leading the Felucians and keeping Organa in hopes of trading him to the Imperials in exchange for leniency. Before they could escape, Brood arrived with her, pet, bull Ranker in tow. Starkiller was struck by recognition, as he had seen her in a vision as well. Demanding that she stand aside, Starkiller was instead set upon by the bull Ranker. Starkiller barely avoided the beast's blows, being forced to adopt evasive tactics against the creature as its heavy armor plates provided effective protection against all of his powers and attacks. However, Brood got wise to this and intercepted him, trying to force him towards the Ranker's jaws. Unable to attack it from the outside, Starkiller attempted a desperate tactic and leaped into the creature's mouth. Using the force to keep the Ranker's mouth shut, Starkiller cut up its tongue with his lightsaber and shocked its brain with a blast of force lightning. Despite this, the Ranker continued to cling to life forcing Starkiller to resort to telekinesis, exploding the monster's head. 
Starkiller luckily retained hold of his lightsaber as he fell off the creature in a mess of gore, because Brood was on him in an instant. Starkiller initially only defended himself, using Sorisu moves against Brood's raw attack, struck by how much alike she was to him. However, he quickly came to the conclusion that if she could turn to the dark side so easily, then she could turn back to the light just as quickly, accepting something that Shark T had explained during their duel, that the force was fluid, and light and dark were just directions. By fighting against Maris Brood, he wasn't turning his back on the dark side, she was simply in his way. With this revelation, Starkiller changed over to the duo form, seizing the offensive. Starkiller began rapidly gaining ground and an increasingly desperate Brood began to lose concentration. As they charged one another, Brood managed to evade Starkiller's attack, hiding herself with the force while throwing her dual guard shot off at Starkiller. He managed to dodge the blades and turned to see Brood catch them as she leaped at him. Starkiller caught her in a telekinetic grip and slammed her against the ground. She evaded Starkiller's attack, again concealing herself as he rammed his lightsaber into the ground. As he looked about for her, she ran at him from behind before dropping down and sliding at his legs, throwing Starkiller off his feet and disarming him. Starkiller only barely managed to reclaim his lightsaber in time to block her scissoring strike, driving her back and acrobatically flipping onto his feet. Again he searched about for her and again she attacked him from behind, though this time he was ready, striking at her leg and knocking her to the ground. Refusing Brood the time needed to recover, Starkiller telekinetically grasped her, raised her up and slammed her against the ground. Beaten and exhausted, Brood surrendered, promising to turn away from the dark side in exchange for mercy. Starkiller was skeptical about her sincerity, seeing that her talents and skills were poisoned, inwardly focused towards survival. He considered her not worthy of the dark side. However, he relented, though he refused to transport her off-planet, and she fled the scene. Bail Organa disapproved of letting her go, as she reminded him too much of another fallen Jedi that he had known. Starkiller asserted that she wasn't truly free, that she would always carry the memories of her actions with her. Starkiller then broached the subject of revolution, though Organa asked to speak with Kota directly about the matter first. Starkiller had Juno retrieve Organa and him directly from the Ranker graveyard, barely avoiding a horde of scavengers eager to devour the bull Ranker's corpse. Meeting with Kota, Organa asserted that open rebellion was too dangerous at the moment, and that any potential members had to be shown that the Empire was vulnerable. Starkiller agreed to meditate on how best to find an appropriate target. In truth, he sent a message to Darth Vader inquiring about such a target. While he awaited the Dark Lord's response, Proxy attacked. Starkiller was impressed by PROXY's latest combat module based on Anakin Skywalker, but his heart wasn't in the fight since his experience in battling real Jedi left PROXY's assassination attempts far less challenging. Starkiller backed Proxy into a corner and impaled him. However, that was when Vader's response arrived and the Anakin Skywalker hologram morphed into Vader. Vader was satisfied by Starkiller's progress, and provided him with a target, a newly constructed Star Destroyer shipyard above Raxus Prime. However, Vader also admonished Starkiller for his developing emotional attachments to his new allies. Reminding Starkiller of where his true allegiance belonged, Vader terminated his link through Proxy. Proxy commented that he hated, being, Vader with Starkiller responding that Vader probably did as well. At that moment, however, Proxy noticed that Juno was in the chamber, having witnessed the entire exchange. Although Eclipse was furious that Starkiller was still loyal to Vader, she decided to remain with Starkiller, believing that the fate of the rebellion would ultimately be in the hands of the apprentice, not his master. After the confrontation with Juno, Starkiller replaced the crystal in his lightsaber, formerly Kota's, with the blue crystal he had found in his ruined family home on Kashyyyk, thus making the weapon truly his own.